Hey folks, I wanted to dive a bit deeper with some alternate visuals to put this recent paper in context, the one ranking the greatest auroral events in recorded history. First of all, the list is not 100% complete. The 1921 event is missing from the list, not sure why, and with confirmed auroral sightings at 27.1 degrees latitude, it would be about 14th on the list. Otherwise, it is pretty solid, and for those living under a rock the last two years, the fact that the 2023 and 2024 solar storms are on this list is a bit asinine. It's only made possible by the weakening of the magnetic field recently, in the ongoing magnetic pole shift, the disaster cycle reset, and the coming next stage of Earth. Most of this list are major solar events, high class flares, major DST geomagnetic storms, but not the 2023 and 2024 events. Those were moderate at best, but with the weaker magnetic shield of Earth now, our planet is becoming more vulnerable. So let's come to this new visualizations, and we'll do several things with it. First of all, the horizontal axis on both charts hits big solar storms and then average solar conditions over on the right. From left to right, it's the 1872 solar storm, the lowest aurora ever seen. Then the Carrington event in 1859, then the May 2024 event, the 2003 Halloween solar storms, the 1989 Quebec blackout solar storm, the 2023 solar storm, the average solar storm, and then the average quiet conditions. The top chart with the colors is looking at latitude extent of auroral production. The lower latitude, the stronger the impact to Earth, and therefore the higher it is on the chart. Below that in gray, we have the approximate power of the solar event that caused said event. So, the 1872 event was likely a double impact, consecutive impact scenario, including at least one major flare. The Carrington event is estimated to be at a low super flare level. The 2024 event was merely the combination of three small X-class flare eruptions. 2003 was an excess of X-20, 1989 was a double impact, and 2023 was a singular M2 flare and filament eruption. The point of these charts, when looked at together, is to show how the 2023 and 2024 events were not the same kind of space weather and solar activity that produced the other events on this list. The 2023 event was more like normal space weather that causes historically average solar storms of low consequence, but it's a top 20 event now. The 2024 event was a bit more than those normal average events, but it wasn't the third strongest solar blast sequence the sun has delivered to our planet. The idea is that the weakening magnetic field, particularly since the acceleration and record anomaly in the field in March of 2023, has been allowing for excess vulnerability of our planet. Another way to look at this a bit more closely is that it's not just the power of the solar event, but the magnetic disruption of the shockwave hitting Earth. The 2003 and 1989 events were 25% stronger in terms of that magnetic impact to Earth, but the 2024 event had a more vast auroral extent. It's a good sign that something else is going on, in this case, the weakening magnetic field. Similarly, that 1921 solar storm we mentioned, the auroral extent was similar to the 2023 storm, but its magnetic disruption, the shockwave disruption impact to Earth in DST, was nearly triple the 2023 event. Them having similar auroral extents isn't possible unless, again, there is something else going on. With at least a year and maybe two of solar maximum remaining, I wouldn't be shocked to see another event pop up on this list, even if it's not a major solar super flare. We're flying without our full shield here in the sun, peaking in activity. For more on the magnetic pole shift, see the videos listed below in the description box. Subscribe and I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe everyone.